John? Oh, perfect. John's yeah, on John's too. Going. Awesome. All right. So let's let's uh, get going and jump into this. So um, thank you for all of your um, work on um, incorporating the suggestions we had at our last meeting. Um, should we just do the same thing? Go page yes. by page? Okay, yes. perfect. Okay. All right. Um, so any suggestions, edit suggestions on the table of contents? I think, Christine, this, I think, let's just go right to the gate in terms of because John Costa had raised the question about the Finance Audit Committee. Okay. And and just because it's right there in the front and it's worthwhile, because I think that everything else, I think, has some good discussion. So, John, I think you had shared with us staff anyway about what a nonprofit and how it should be established. I think I shared that with everybody. You did. And my only, and it's, you know, again, um, the concern that I would have is just another committee to then get people to be showing up. And that really is the only, um, and, and prior to us, there was never an audit committee of OCPC, it was always just the finance meeting. So hence we figured we'd bring the two together and the committee does similar work in terms of, of you know, reviewing and what's time for um, reviewing the, you know, of, of the RFP for the audit. But I think John's point is, is that um, to have it separate, um, and um, maybe John, you may want to just further explain. Mary, if I can, mm -hmm. I, um, <clears throat> I think a, a compromise might be. I might be more acceptable if we, if the chair, treasurer wasn't just also the chair. I'm st I'm still concerned that normally an audit committee is totally separate from everything and everybody. But I understand the complications of getting people to volunteer. But I, when I, when I saw the new, new the new write up and it named the treasurer as the chairman, that one kind of really jumped out. So I think if we change the language that the, that the chair can can be anyone other than than an office, a, the, can be anyone but the treasurer, that might that'll pacify me a little bit as to the separation of powers <clears throat> and the, the lack of a concern I have for conflict of possible interest with the same person who's maybe being audited is also the chair of that committee. It seems a little um, just challenging to me. Yeah, yeah, your thoughts. I would just, and I would just say from my perspective, I mean, right, this committee, this council has made great strides in being transparent. Um, I, you know, I don't necessarily have so much the issue, but, the, but our bylaws provide that the chair, that the treasurer serves as the chair of the finance committee. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine either way. I it just, as I said, trying to find, unless John, you want to maybe nominate yourself as the chair of the audit committee. I don't even have an audit committee yet, so I can't do that. Well, trying to create one. I wonder if we're kind of conflating two things here because to do a finance audit committee as two separate committees, we would actually have to also change the bylaws Mm -hmm. And this can this subgroup is only charged with explaining where we are today in terms of setting forth fiscal policies. So maybe we adopt it based on the way it exists today and make a recommendation that we separate out the audit committee and the bylaws and make the chair of the audit committee someone other than the treasurer um, of OCPC. Mm -hmm. um, and then we could... Um, at least get through this process and start that next process as part of the current ongoing discussion of bylaw changes from year to year. The um, the one thing I, that makes me feel a little more comfortable about where we are today is that we do have full audited financials by our CPA firm, by an outside CPA firm. A lot of nonprofits can't really afford to have full audited financials. They only have reviewed financials if they're lucky. Um, so I do feel a little bit better about the fact that we have a full audit as part of our overhead process. And they should be doing spot checking on us, right? They should be, um, well, actually more than spot checking, they're doing a full audit. They should be really auditing all of our payments, all of our payables. They, they do. Oh, well, we pay them, I would hope so. <laughs> are we, are we at 40 grand right now? I think, um. I, I can go along with Becky's suggestion for the moment. 
pending a review of the bylaws. So we will bring this up to Lee Hartman because he chairs that committee. And then when it does get discussed, members of those that have been participating will be invited to attend so we can talk that through. Excellent suggestion. And I believe the audit committee, none of the officers can be on the audit committee, not just the treasurer. All right. So anything else on this first page, Mary? You think no, that was the big one? That, that was the big one. And I okay. think it was worthwhile to get that one out of the way just to talk about it in advance. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, anything on uh, page one? No. No? Page two? All right. No hands. Okay. How about page three? This is so funny. When I was looking at what we'd gotten emailed, I couldn't see all of the redlining. I could only see comments in place. So it's weird. I'm actually seeing a lot more now than I did before. So this is helpful. And Megan, I think that is, are you in Adobe, Becky? Yeah, I think I saved the PDF version because um, it was. it's funny because the word would show, I think, the red, but then the PDF shows the comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah. You know what I sometimes do is I print to PDF and I seem to get mm. as opposed to saving it as a PDF. I wonder if that would work more easily. But anyway, we can try that next time. Okay. At least I can see it now. This is good. And I just want to note that anywhere where we put, we suggested putting a footnote just mm. for the sake of layout, I've put it in the content, um, in the comments as to what we've suggested for writing, just I just wanted to keep it. I figured I would clean everything up after we've reviewed all the content, so. Thank you, Mike. All right, anybody have any uh, comments, questions, concerns on this first or uh, third page, actually? I do not see any hands. All right. Looks like we're good on that one, Megan. Okay. How about the next page? Okay. Um, any questions or uh, comments or concerns on this page? Okay. Looks like we're good on that one. All right. So now on to page um, three, Look, according to this. All right, any concerns on page three? I don't know okay. if it helps to note that when we were talking about long-term objectives, we decided that goals was a more accurate use right. for the policy version of every because we Charlie was good with saying, you know, that he, you know, found the, the definition between the difference between the goals and objectives. And we felt goals were more suited and then we just removed long-term because it's kind of indicative of that. Mm -hmm. So that's how we kind of solved the issue. We can't get too, too long-term given the fact that our grants are pretty cyclical. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that sounds great to me. Good choice of words. All right, anything else on page three? All right, no hands. All right, page four. Megan, just want to walk us through this because I know I had missed the meeting that you guys yep. had earlier today. So we just changed, we talked about during the last one, it was, we were listing specific months. So actually that is, um, there is a question that we were kind of going back and forth between. So it's now reads, the first draft of the budget will be prepared by the executive director and the fiscal officer with input from the staff. This will then be presented to the Finance Audit Committee in time for submission at a spring meeting of the OCPC Council held in advance of the final budget presentation. The final budget will be presented to and adopted by the OCP, OCPC Council with or without modification at a council meeting held around the fiscal year end. 
the annual budget will consist of expenses, income, and pass-through funds. So for us, we were going back and forth and whether or not spring is a proper enough word to use or if it's better to use like fourth quarter. The last right, couple... any... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say any concerns or, or questions? I mean, spring is going to be up until June 22nd. So I think that that, you know, for an initial presentation, I think that is, that works. It'll be before then. And the way that we've been doing it the last couple years is that that final June date that we have our last meeting, mm -hmm. the last Wednesday of the month, that has tended to be our annual meeting. Um, which means that we do, that's when the final, final, that's the final that, that it gets adopted. So. And I put around the fiscal year end just because of that. And I know that originally it mentioned something where June or July. So I figured that putting around. And July does not work because that in the next fiscal year, we, we just needed to be done before June 30th. So I should just say by the fiscal year end. That would be a suggestion that I would make is that it, it needs to be presented before the end of the fiscal year. And adopted. Yeah. Yeah. Right. By the end of the fiscal year. If we don't adopt a budget by the end of the fiscal year, what happens? We don't allow that to happen. It's not like the world ends, but you know, technically you're ending up your you know, the, the feeling is, is that you're running your business without a true plan in place. Um, I, I understand that. But, but like, what, like the, the what federal government operating a continuing yeah, resolution, exactly. right? So. <laughs> but that's a good question, Becky. I'm not sure that's something we want to copy. But but to Becky's point, we, we don't have any language that says, and if a budget isn't passed, hmm. X, Y, and Z happens. I well, I mean, I know we don't want to do that, but part of our budget is based on third party information and or expectations of third party information. And if we go through some sort of major change, um, you know, mm -hmm. there could be a possibility that it's difficult to set a budget. Um, and, you know, it might be like, you know, if we wait two weeks, we're going to have a um, Congress or the state is going to pass something that makes it clear what we have and we can do something responsibly because sometimes adopting a budget just to meet a deadline is not meaningful if it's based on information that's not accurate. So the last couple of years, what we, we've we been doing as well, we present a preliminary budget in March, we review the budget um, for FY will be for the next fiscal year mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. April. And then we look at it in May, which is really kind of gets where all these questions and it's reviewed what's coming in, what's not coming in. So by June, you've seen it <clears throat> in finance, you've seen it in finance and council two, four, six, eight times. But to your point is um, things do happen where mm -hmm. our, our allocation may not be coming in for some reason. Oh, well, what if they're in the middle of eliminating DOT? Run for the we we'll always realize, retain the right to adjust the budget throughout the year based on circumstances. Well, it's it's adjusted through the year based on circumstances now. Right. I mean, we have it in the expense. So budgeted expense amounts may change if the rate of expenditures increases or decreases during the budget year. See budget review and amendment below. And do we say that on income too? Um, yeah, the income. Additional is income may changing. be allocated yeah. as changes in income occur. And then budget review upon conclusion of each month, expenditures for the period through the end of that month will be updated by actual totals. Are there any notable variances? miscellaneous amount is relocated where needed. All of this though is more about there's no reference so far to a downward okay I see it here okay well would you 
Becky, would you, you rather have talk it? more about increases in grants than losing grants? Mm -hmm. That's my only point. Becky, would you feel more comfortable with language that said that, you know, something along the lines that the council will make every attempt to uh, vote a balanced budget by the end of the fiscal year or, you know, providing something where there's, um, you know, that's at the goal that we're going to try to do that. But if um, there was um, something that was um, crazy happening that um, that might prevent us from it, we wouldn't be in violation of our own policies. That That's what I'm getting at. Like, is there something where we say, um, provided that the, you know, the information required to produce a budget budget is available from third parties or something along those lines. But it's not just because we're not doing it or our staff isn't doing it. It's because there's something big going on in the world. Well, I mean, Mary, Mary said that you review like there's a preliminary budget to like, like go through like eight reviews or whatever. Couldn't uh -huh. you say the most in the event that you can't pass one, you you the most recent budget that was reviewed may be the one that will be enforced until such time. I don't know, just in case. Uh -huh. Budget can be adopted. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm there's the continuing resolution, Sean. So in the event, oops, that a budget cannot be adopted, um, the most recent, mo current, the current budget. Preliminary budget, or you should put preliminary. No. Right. Mary. Budget last approved mm -hmm. by the council. Well, can I we... can I in, can I intersect interject on it because that preliminary budget is never really approved, but it's reviewed. No. Yeah. It's, okay. In the event that a budget cannot be adopted, the most recent budget adopted by the council will continue until such time as a budget can be approved. A new budget can be approved. Could you say like we would just basically by? have to continue last year's budget, right? Would you That's want to put in adopted by? It cannot be adopted by X date or something. By the end of the fiscal year, the most recent, uh, recent adopted budget budget by the council will be. We'll continue in force. Well, until no, just ended it enforced. Great, love that. You left you left out by on the on the previous line adopted by the end. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. I also have a side note: Is spring capitalized? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Um, yes. I don't know. The sentence again. Uh, a so spring be meeting, a spring I would say meeting. no, no, because if we were if we were saying the spring, I think it might be, but spring, spring meeting, meeting, I don't think it is it's generic, and it's not today. Mm -mm. Okay, leave it, leave it at that, and we can to... we can adjust that. Yeah, I know it's simple, but I figured since we were right there and I was looking at it. Yeah. 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 All right. Any other suggestions on this page? I just have a question. Sure. Where it says we're going to use the most recent adopted budget. Are you think, suggesting that that's the new budget that we're working on? Or are you talking about the old budget that was, because that's the last budget that was, was adopted, was the was the budget's closing? I think we have to continue <clears throat> the prior year's budget mm -hmm. in terms of income, monthly income and expenses until so nobody would get a raise, nobody, like nothing level funded. It level would just funded, have to right. stay level funded, essentially. Okay, I'm fine. I just want to make sure we're clear on what, you, what you're referring to as adopted budget. Because mm -hmm. uh, the all the preliminaries aren't adopted, just they reviewed until we get to the final. Yeah. Right. And then are you now then incurring and spending past budget money in a new budget year? How do you book you for that? level fund. I mean, you yeah, say that again, John, maybe what we should say is at the same level as the prior budget. 
instead of right an important thing um, mm -hmm. it's, it's basically a level funded budget where can we would continue yeah. from the previous year's budget okay so the budget how about this the council will continue to operate based on the uh level funding from the prior year the council will continue to sorry what was that next word run operate ah oh, that makes way more sense operate based on the prior years um No, not operate the budget, operate the organization. All right. So yep, that makes continue me continue to operate based on the prior year approximately as <laughs> yes. organization. Sorry, it's been a long day. Mm -hmm. The organization based on the prior year's budget. Um apostrophe. Yep. Something Don, does that sound better to you or no? That's clear. I just question how you how you'll bookkeep the expenses. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll just be keeping the old prior year open, I assume. Mm -hmm. Oh. But Reception? then you could have then you could have current new fiscal year stuff being applied to the prior. I'm just concerned how you're gonna do how you're gonna do the accounting side of it, because you have so many different reports and accounting that goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Um we have to think through how that all gets done. But I like what you're saying here now. At least you, it gives you a, a policy for how to operate if, if for some reason a budget doesn't get approved. So the good news is as we go through today, um, this will give us a chance. We'll have a cleaned up version and just hearing the conversation as well. We'll have the chance also at the finance committee to kind of run through it one more time to kind of think this mindset about how that would work. And Brenda, you know, we can have like a, um, between the fiscal office, we can have just some further conversations internally how that would affect us. I'll highlight it just as a Good. catch eye. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anything else on this page? All right. How about page five? These are all just the semantics of the words and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right. Um, page six. All right, we had talked about the presentation of the financial statements quite a bit as well. Yes. So um do you want to run through what we're saying now? <clears throat> yes. So we um, originally, as we can see, we, we had stated that there would not be meetings in July, August, November, and December. However, that we don't want to confirm that because that needs to be voted. Uh -huh. So we took that out. I'm just making sure that was all. And then, um, we put an asterisk after during the months of the council does uh council members even during the months that the council does not convene asterisk and then we said the council may vote to not meet during certain months by the year in compliance with the bylaws That's although yes even during okay yes so because we are stating that if we don't convene you would still gain access to the statements and then we're just kind of specifying that we don't necessarily meet every month and you do say in the first line that it's monthly financial statements. Well, yeah, so we, I think that still keeps us on the monthly mm -hmm. statements. Oh, and then we also got rid of each month at regular. Right. But, but the statements are still being prepared monthly. Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. No, I'm, my my only thought was, do we need to say even the months the council does the council doesn't convene? Does that matter? I mean, if we say we're presenting them each month, they're presented each month. It doesn't matter whether we're meeting or not. But um, well, if if we don't, if the council doesn't meet, don't we vote on multiple monthly at the next meeting? Multiple. We monthly? do. We have done that. So we haven't. Um, 
and and that was a, a good point, Sean. I was going to uh, bring that up that we don't necessarily send out the financial statements every month because the months that we don't meet, we quite often get two months worth at one time and we tackle both of the months at that one meeting. So, you know, if we're going to send them out every month, that's fine. Um, but that's actually know. what we have been starting to do. Okay. So you're doing that now? Past, <laughs> yeah. We've been sending out the financials and a staff report every month. And then, but we still put it as part of the consent agenda to be. Because it needs to be adopted. And yeah, okay. we need to get caught up. Okay. So that still, right. what Becky was identifying, that first sentence, the fiscal officer presents monthly financial statements. So that is what is happening. The adoption piece is when they may be bundled in a, like a consent agenda when we take the summer off. Okay. Um, but, do we need to say that saying somewhere that it's like if if it's not presented like during a certain month it's and still that bottom line Megan if where it says for a final vote of approval during the council meeting um if you throw the word subsequent um before council um and then maybe put under packet maybe make it a plural with an apprentices you know, okay. once the packets are approved, whatever, so on and so forth. Well, here's the other thing you could say is that according to open meeting law, because that's what you have to do. Right. We have to have these presented according to open meeting law. So, um, is that capitalized? Uh, yeah, open meeting law. Open is. meeting law, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to change, change the is to our. Uh, the slash is our yes yeah. yeah. oh. nothing like the english language <laughs> probably should change it to it slash they ah uh, it is yeah Can I, they are yeah, I, I think you're probably just what they are. Or, right. Would it help if I removed the red for a moment? I think yeah. it would. Yeah. Yes. I feel like there's so there's much that. There. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it should be reg regularly scheduled meetings of the finance audit committee, right? Mm hmm Regularly scheduled meetings of the finance audit committee. Yeah. Every month I'm present to the finance committee. I don't know that the open meeting law where it's worded there applies if I don't think it's appropriate where it is. The open meeting law applies to everything we do. any any open meeting that we have. It doesn't necessarily apply to a meeting that the well uh, all the meetings are, are open to the public. Uh, I just I don't know if I like it the way it's set up. Yeah, I'm not. I, I kind of agree with John. I'm not sure that um, the open meeting law is what requires. I mean, if we're going to approve it, we have to approve it in an open meeting. And and I think my comment about oh, the open I see you're saying it's because of the open meeting law that we can only approve it during a council meeting as opposed to via email or something. That is that's what I was looking for. Okay. So yeah, maybe that actually maybe do we put it over end. here? Maybe it goes at the end for approval during um uh the subsequent council meeting held in accordance with the open meeting law or something like that. Yeah, if you want to 
that that would be better if you want to put that in. I don't think you even need to mention all the meeting law, but if you want to put that in, it's better there than at the beginning of the sentence. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, so just start it with once. Yep. Do we want to add full council rather than just the council? Because um you know, a part of the council is meeting, but we're not the full council. It might just be the finance audit committee. So do we want to say even during the months, the full council does not convene? I think we've been using council to mean the full council. Okay. Okay. Right. Then we don't need to add it. Okay. I think it's okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Although actually we just use council. We don't use OCPC council any other place. <laughs> We use council for the full council, and then we use the committee for anything other than the what full do we? Because I can do a control find after this meeting and okay, make it consistent. Do we want to put OCPC before council, or just keep it at council? I think up at the beginning, Megan will do a glossary with the name OCPC. Will then be referred to as council throughout this document. Okay. So I'll that could be comment. helpful. Good point, Mary. And then, as you said, Megan, you can do a control find and replace. Yeah. I know this isn't the right wording, but. Well, but. I know what I mean. <laughs> you know what you mean. That's all that matters. <laughs> do we have okay. to go the red line? <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> Ready? <laughs> Here it comes. All right. This was all, right. all just um, standard. Just cleaning up the language? Yep. Okay. All right. Anything else on page five? Six. Nope. Oh, is that six? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Page six. Moving faster. I know. You are on fire. All right. How about page seven? All right. So this was the big one that we had a lot of discussion over and, and knew we needed to kind of rework. Um, and so I'm just remembering it's part of the finance documents kept in file. Oh, okay. This is so, cause I know that, um, John had brought up the concern for, um, kind of checks and balances for the signatories and, and getting documentation. So, but we know that a big piece of what we do is pass through funds and that is somewhat unnecessary. I mean, a lot of extra work that doesn't necessarily need to be reviewed unless wanted. So we changed it with, we added in, I should say, with the exception of pass-through funds, which are reviewed internally by the respective department managers and executive director, any accounts payable over the amount of $10,000 will include copies of the invoice. All accounts payable documentation will be available for review and comment by any member of the OCPC council upon request through the executive director and to the fiscal officer. I think it works. I'm okay with that. All right. Any other suggestions on this page? And we also did, because we know that there was a question about the liability. Yeah. Um, we were going to take out liability, but really it because it's an employee payment um, deduction. So we decided to add a footnote just stating that employees may elect to contribute out of their pay to the United Way by OCPC. Where are the footnotes appearing? They're going to be at the bottom. Right okay. now, they're just in comments just for the sake of... Oh, so they'll be on each page? Correct. Yep. Oh, so okay. wherever the asterisk is, it'll be on that specific page. There's nothing more I hate is having an asterisk. I can't find where it goes. Yeah, no. And I'll have it numbered. So then that way, too, it'll be... Yeah, it'll be at the bottom. Okay. All right, looks good, Megan. All right, on to page eight. And this page is only had this change. Brenda, I don't know if you just wanted to kind of explain. <clears throat> okay. Um we had talked, we I had put in there about um purchases over a certain amount requiring approval. And when I talked to the auditor, she said that there's no need to um, get approval over a certain amount because the the 
controls that we already have in place requiring a three person approval before any payment is processed, followed by the requirement of two signatures on all payments is enough of a control on purchases. We did decide, we did decide however, to um, add the, did we add the language, Megan, for the over 10,000 that we talked about today? That was above, that was in the, um, which topic, which, which was that, accounts payable? Yep. No. Yeah, that yeah. was in the accounts point, payable. The yeah, so that was above, payable. yes. So my question yeah. here, I thought what we were trying to get at here in the purchasing um, are what if there are purchases that are not specifically identified in the budget? <laughs> like we need a new roof. At what point does the, either the executive board or the council have to vote on that if it was not in the budget? So I think that's where we do a lot of vetting of those. We have a capital budget that we put together. Um, I mean, certainly um, call it accidents or whatever, right? right. A, car comes, a car comes, but that's where we also have insurance to pay for some of that. Um, so, you know, I think that the unexpected um, may always happen, but I think what we do is we flush out, you know, we know laptops can last only between three to five years. We know our phone systems and changing, you know, some of those phone things open. So, you know, the unexpected charge, um, and this might be dicing it too, because the ROM budget versus OCPC budget, but, um, you know, I, I, I think that's where, you know, if there, if there are items like a roof, that's going to cost us 20 grand, 15, 20 grand. Right. So we need right. to come to, you. um, so that's why I was getting at, are there any, so when I thought of purchases over 2000, I wasn't sure 2000 was a good number, but is there any point at which purchases that are not identified in the budget or not included in the budget would require some additional approval before you could spend the money? I, I have to say that when we, in the beginning, when I put the budget together, our capital our, um, you know, the amount that I budget in there for things like that is always very high, particularly because we have had the roof kind of hanging out there in the ether for a number of years now. Okay, and so it's already in the budget. It really sort of. is. It really is. We, okay. would, you know, and if anything beyond that would happen, I would think it would have to have been some kind of hurricane or flood damage, something that our insurance would kick in. But, but okay. I think Becky raises a good point just in terms yeah, of, sure. you know, um, those checks and balances, right? So, I mean, I'm, let me just play this through because if there is something um, not covered by insurance or, gosh, I can't even remember, but still. Um, I think I, I was thinking if there's an unanticipated purchase of more than $10,000, you would go to the board and let them know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, so, and I, th I guess maybe then your question is, is that is in the fiscal policy, is that there, right? And in the, if in, in accounts payable over the amount of 10,000 will include copies. You're saying because we're gonna get copies of the payables, mm -hmm. we should at that point say, hey, Mary, why are you spending $10,000? It's not, we didn't see this coming. And I think that's a legitimate question from a board doing your, being the fiscal agent and being the fiscal responsible body to be asking those questions. I think, you know, there's been some questions I, again, we, that's where there's been sometimes even when we go through the budget, I will say, let's stop at the ROM because that's where most of our, our large ticket items really are is relating to the building to take the time during the finances to address them. Certainly, I don't think that we've had anything over 10,000 recently anyway. But what if you what if you changed it from any accounts payable to any capital expenditure over ten thousand? Because your accounts payable looks almost like your day to day expenses, where capital expenditures is totally totally independent, and those could be the kind of things you don't anticipate. So what if we just called it ca anything any capital expenditure over a certain amount of money? No, I, I would leave that as accounts payable because that could also include what if you were going to pay a consultant twenty thousand dollars right, right. Okay. to do a project that we had never talked about. Okay. Um, 
but here's here's what I my my thought would be, um, because right, this is the first re, re you know, well, this is now the third reiteration that we've got of the of this of the policy. I think some of this is that we're going to keep these good questions that are being raised, and going to need to keep tweaking them along the way. Um, right. At that at a point, the finance committee we can put as an as a continuing agenda item, you know, um, the financial policies and the review, or if there's been anything else that we need to do. Okay. So mm -hmm. right now we're just going to delete everything from all, all purchases to the end there. Cause Brenda's comment will get deleted mm -hmm. as well then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Becky, historically, Mary, we always talked about um, purchases. We would chat quite frequently. And I think um, other members of the executive committee were always made aware when Mary had um, a plan to purchase something that was unanticipated that um, we would discuss it. So, you know, this is, she's it's something she's been doing all along anyway, but it would be good to get something in um, the policy. Well, it's always funny because, you know, when you do policies like this, it's you do them at a point when you almost don't need them because mm -hmm. the people who really right. need these policies in place don't ask never to put write them in them. place. <laughs> Would never write them. <laughs> right. But this mm -hmm. policy has to survive past Mary. Yeah. Correct. Presumably. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that's that's the only reason why I'm being, you know, why I'm asking questions like these. And I, so, I hate to suggest adding to the document, but is it worth it to put something regarding capital expenditures in its own paragraph. And I think that's what John Costa was alluding to in his comment. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's do this. Um, and not that I take in the time, we have got the time, but um, let us take that, com this conversation a well um, and figuring out the right place for that capital. Um, and maybe it needs to be further up top so without complicating, we'll take this back and have it be ready um, from the conversation. And maybe and maybe it's just internally that we just say, let's kind of go through this and um, and, and see how it plays out and revisit it in a couple months. I mean, right, there's a couple of things. We're gonna be going into the budget season anyway. So we're really, this is like really great time to have these in place. So as we go through these next couple of months, we may want to take a look at that finance meeting agenda item where it says, Hey, in the policy, where did it address this? Right. Um, so, Charlie, you've been quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know Charlie was on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna drop a bomb. Are you there, Charlie? Charlie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think the the whole thing about having a, a section elsewhere about the capital. Purchasing is a good idea, and, and we can work offline on that to kind of wordsmithing and then run it back by you all to yeah. kind of tighten it up. But I think the whole thing about, you know, just purchasing and maybe instead of just calling it purchasing, it should be purchasing and contracting. Ah, that's a good idea. Um, and somewhere in here, we should reference the 30B procurement manual as well. That's even better, right. That procurements shall be done in compliance with. Yeah, 30B, 30B. Yep. Mm -hmm. as applicable or whatever, something like that. See, look at, I know. Sorry, Charlie, I mean, what was it that you said we should reference procurements? You're, I can't speak. It's uh, yeah, there's a, there's a state 30B procurement manual. You know, it gives you the thresholds of when you have to put, go out to bid with an RFP versus getting three <clears> quotes. Um, Maybe you could even just provide like a hyperlink to it in the document itself. Yeah. And, and or addendum. Yeah. Like, yeah, we yeah. can make it yeah. as a footnote too or something. Thank you, Charlie. Mm. All right. Anything else on page eight? Looks like I'm we're still good. looking at parenthetical plurals. You know, I think we're going to get another chance to read this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the answer to this. It's driving me crazy. We can worry about the, we can worry about the minutiae at a later time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. How about page nine? 
Just to defend myself, I'm the numbers guy, not the English guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any suggestions on this? The biggest change here was the NICRA. And then the NICRA is requ required every year. I went back into the document and used to be two years, but it is it is required as a requirement every every year to be rene renegotiated. So I changed the wording. So that was that. <laughs> Thanks, Brenda. Perfect. All right. Anything else on nine? Mm -hmm. All right. How about ten? Oh, Peb. Mary, I was confused about that. Finance Audit Committee, OPEB Trust Committee, about it, um, it is, the fund is, manager. Yeah. Um, so it it is, give me one second. So it is, so this is not the Finance Audit Committee, OPEB Trust. This is the OPEB Trust. Yeah, the Finance Audit Committee should come out. Right. Okay. Yeah. And this is my challenge. And I did not participate in this afternoon's meeting that Charlie, Brenda, and Sean, um, I could have cut this one, but yeah. Sorry, right. which committee do we, we remove? It's the OPEB, oh, it's just OPEB trust. Okay. That's what, okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. We did add a footer to explain the OPEB trust. Everybody's now going to know everything about the OPEB trust before <laughs> in the next couple of weeks, but next couple of months. But I think it's a valuable mm, Definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, anything well, else on this page? The biggest amount of money we have in, you know, set aside, right? Mm hmm. Looks good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, on to the next page. All right. So, ooh, I like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Anything on 11? Uh, <laughs> no, but Google says it's very confusing. If you put an S in a subject, arguably you're supposed to say like the object apostrophe S is parentheses are parentheses. So just so, yeah. apparently it's not well liked as a form. Yeah. <laughs> so that's do it. that with do with that what you will. Okay. Well, it is. That's the, sure if we get is Megan, are they were? If we get back in fifteen minutes, she's gonna figure out how to wordsmith that. Much yep. Okay. We're Perfect. gonna get around it. Yeah. I got Perfect. it. I will. Okay. Make All right. A thing. Anything else tonight? Or Everybody feeling pretty good about the document at this point? Ready for one last review? After we they have uh, cleaned up, tweak it up. Be, yeah, this will be sent out um, for um, with the packet for the council for the finance meeting next week. I can't believe the finance meeting is next week and council meeting is next week. Yeah, already. <clears throat> this is the longest short month. Um, I am going to be having to leave the finance committee meeting a little bit early, so okay. I think you've heard all of my comments, but yes. um, I may have to leave early on Tuesday. Thank you, Becky. Okay, thanks, Becky. All right, so I think that's all we've got for tonight. Thank you, everyone, so much for coming. Another great, uh, productive meeting. Well done. Kudos thank to everybody. You. So thank you all for participating and uh, Megan for your awesome skills. <laughs> <laughs> Just a miracle book. She, she needs to run a training class for us. <laughs> she does. She does. <laughs> um, for beginners. <laughs> she's pretty amazing. But just to um, from all of us at the, uh, for the staff, um, thank you to you council members, your guidance, your mm -hmm. comments. Are, are, are very much appreciated. Um, again, this is just another document that is going to be accumulated for a better, stronger, more transparent organization. And um, we couldn't do it without your input. So thank you to all of you. 
and um, John used to still consider it the audit committee. So just stand by. Yeah, more to come. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank well, you. thank you, everyone. Have thank a good you. night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 See you Bye. next week. <laughs>